Hi guys, Dr. Jordan Ax here, and we're going to take a few minutes here. I'm going to really explain to you how we're getting great results in the office with not only knee pain, but joint pain and spinal issues. One of the main treatments we're doing here is stem cells, but I'm going to, I'm going to really take you through it so you can fully understand it. I want to talk about really the importance of our health. I want to talk secondly about our medical system and why we are spending so much money and how we can start to save money. I'm also going to talk about the advances in stem cells and what other doctors around the world, how they're using it. Um, and I want to talk about the pros and cons of surgery as well. So again, how important is our health? It's the most important thing there is, right? Because if you lose your health, you lose everything. Your house, your car, your family, right? One of the leading causes of uh, bankruptcy is medical debt. And a lot of divorces are financial related. So it's a big deal, guys. It affects your life in a big way. And most people know it's a lot easier and cheaper to prevent something than treat it once it's happened. We, uh, uh, amongst wealthy countries, we have the most expensive health healthcare system on the planet, okay? We spend about $8,500 a year on our healthcare. That's insane, right? Who wishes they had another $8,500 a year okay so we spend the most yet we're dead last that's like you having the fastest or you spent the most on your race card of anyone but you consistently lose every race what would you do you'd probably start racing or pick a new sport or something not continue to do the same thing and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly why that is if you look at a disease chart or a health chart from 0 to 100 percent 100 percent being 100 percent healthy no disease zero being dead Okay, you don't have a, Harvard did a study and they found you don't have a symptom, you're at 60% function. You know, headaches, sciatica, you know, aches and pains, um, you know, all the little symptoms that we feel. And then you don't have a full bone disease until you're at 40%, cancer, heart disease, um, you know, bone on bone, uh, knee issues, joint pain, you know, those diseases don't really happen until you're at 40% function. And guess where we treat disease at? Or where do we treat people? Yeah, when you're in 40% or below. Or what's cheaper, to, pre to prevent something or treat it down the timeline? It's always cheaper to treat something prevention. It's the same reason it's way cheaper to keep your oil changed than it is to wait until your engine blows and then replace the engine. Guys, we're pla replacing a lot of engines in America right now. We need to start changing the oil. And that's one thing we're able to do with regenerative medicine. We're actually able to rehab and regenerate the tissues you already have instead of having to replace it, which is a lot more work, a lot more problems, a lot more rehab, and a lot more pain. We're able to kind of avoid that. So again, health is important, and we need to start reevaluating how we're, how we're looking at the healthcare system. So right now, I want to jump into a video and really that demonstrates what other doctors around the world and how they're using stem cells, and then we're going to continue after that. Maybe you've heard of stem cell therapy, maybe you haven't, but it's something you're sure to hear more of, especially with the growth of the new field of regenerative medicine. Experts are telling us it has the potential to cure ailments previously not thought possible. If you think stem cell therapy might be right for you, talk to the physician who's making this presentation available. And they said, oh my goodness, you have vascular peripheral artery disease. They would have to take my left leg off. And I, I'm asking them, how far do you take a left leg off, I mean, a leg off? And they said it would probably be right below the knee. I do some real extreme, let's say, type of sports stuff. I was going to Sundong K. There's only been like under 300 people in the world that have been there. So my knee was my first concern. They told me I had a 60% tear in my meniscus and my MRI. So you don't want to go in there with a bad knee. I've been suffering with my back for the last three years as far as, you know, painful. I mean, it's been stiff for many, many years. My three herniated discs, and they're, one of them at least is, is severely degenerated. So I did a lot of research and I realized that a lot of the athletes were going to Germany and doing a lot of the stem cell treatments. Two years ago, I had a heart attack. 
my body started to get weaker in the knees on down. I found out through stem cells from my stepson. And he says, you're gonna be a guinea pig. <laughs> Stem cell therapy and the brand new field of regenerative medicine are still in the earliest research stages compared to other branches of traditional Western medicine. So regenerative medicine is the use and study of cells and therapies that come from tissues that we use as graft to try to help regenerate and heal damaged or degenerative tissue in trying to promote the tissue's normal function. Regenerative medicine is a field that overlaps with the stem cell biology field and the idea is that there are many diseases and injuries which will cause degeneration or loss of cells within a tissue. And the entire goal of regenerative medicine is to be able to harness stem cells or other cells in the body to convince those tissues to regenerate or rebuild or repopulate themselves. I think in about five to ten years, regenerative medicine will actually be the norm. Um, for primary treatment for a lot of ailments, not just sports related or connective tissue related, but people who have heart disease, people who have Parkinson's. I think patients will benefit from stem cell therapy across the board. And I think in five to 10 years, we're gonna see this as a primary mode of treatment. As surgeons, we look at medications, injections. If that fails, don't come back or have surgery. So now we have that in between. Now you have the opportunity of treating your own body with your own body's products. It's absolutely incredible. We're seeing, even in patients with significant pathology, we're seeing a reduction in their pain and an improvement in their level of disability. And that's very, very promising. What we're doing in regenerative medicine is truly the tip of the iceberg. I'm excited about the fact that the paradigm is shifting away from just treating symptoms to actually helping people heal themselves. Injecting these unique stem cells into humans with degenerative disease or injuries to affect tissue repair is most definitely promising. When I would jog, I thought maybe I had not stretched enough or had pulled a muscle to the point that I could not walk like maybe 10 feet. And so I decided that I'd better seek out some medical care. And they said, oh my goodness, you have vascular peripheral artery disease. So in peripheral artery disease or critical limb ischemia, what happens is that the main arteries coming down to feed blood into the foot get blocked. And so the blood uh, cannot get down there and the tissue starts to die. There's incredible pain, the, the nerves are dying. Since you have, I guess, three main arteries going down your leg and two of them are completely clogged, they would have to take my left leg off. I did the stem cell, uh, it was a blind study. And I didn't know if I had placebo or stem cell at that time. And a year later, they told me that I had gotten the stem cell. And I've been able to walk, jog, bicycle, um, skydive, but it's just been making a tremendous difference in my life. Make a long story short, so they give me an MRI on my knee, and from there, they told me I had a 60% tear in my meniscus and my MRI. I'm 61 years old, so you're, you're, if you go out and play hard, your body's gonna end up feeling it. Now, I was also going to Vietnam. I do some real extreme, let's say, type of sports stuff. And I was all set to do the surgery. I was set the next morning to do the surgery. We end up deciding that we're gonna put stem cells in my knee. So the stem cells have been incredible. And then other injections I've done, PRP, which is the spinning of the blood with the stem cells. And I would say on the knee, they worked amazing. Platelet-rich plasma, otherwise known as PRP, is a form of regenerative medicine treatment where we take someone's blood from a peripheral blood draw and we spin it and we isolate the platelets. Those platelets contain growth factors that when re-injected into a damaged tissue organ can help promote healing almost tenfold and try to regenerate healthy tissue. And whatever it does, it does its thing. So the knee did really well. A lot of professional athletes who need to get back to their game quick are turning to stem cell therapy to help promote healing. So even patients who've had um, surgeries or athletes who don't want to have surgery or don't necessarily need it are using stem cells to help get them back in the game faster and help promote healing for whatever injury that they've had. You know, my shoulder was a situation where I've had two surgeries, uh, meniscus, I mean uh, labrum tear, 
rotator cuff tears. Had to have that done twice. So, you know, I heard about this situation and said, "Wow, I uh, let me take a chance and see if that see if it helps." So when I have patients that come to me, they say, "Oh, I heard such and such." who is a professional athlete has had this treatment, can you tell me about it? Would I be a good candidate? And so I have a lot of patients that come to me because they've seen these professional athletes on the news have had stem cell therapy. I've had oh, multiple um, chiropractic treatments. I've had the same as far as acupuncture, massage. I had uh, three epidurals, but um, the, the maximum benefit that I received of all the treatment was about three weeks of relief. When I was told about the stem cells and the opportunity to possibly regrow the area between the discs, I was there <laughs> in a heartbeat. I didn't ask questions. Two years ago, I had a heart attack, and that was my major concern of what I had, you know, of pain and stuff. They took the stem cells out and then injected that into my arm, into my blood vein, and all of a sudden, within 12 to 14 hours, the pain in my legs was gone, and the pain in my, around my chest area where my heart was, was gone. It's just phenomenal. So it's kind of, it's kind of neat. <laughs> so overall, it's an extremely promising procedure using stem cells combined with other cells sometimes with regard to try to improve function, to regenerate damaged tissue, making stem cells really the most promising uh, adventure in modern medicine. Now you have the opportunity of treating your own body with your own body's products. It's absolutely incredible. My success rate is well over 95%. And that 5% really is a person who absolutely will not try any surgery and will give this a shot knowing that they're not going to be fully better. So, 95%, and the results have been incredible. Well, right now there are dozens of clinical trials going on um, regarding stem cell therapy, and I think in the next five to 10 years, the FDA will adapt and adopt stem cell treatment as a primary mode of therapy because it carries less risk than surgeries and has been shown to have success with repairing tissue, repairing organs, and patients across the country have had very good success with stem cell therapy. The final answers will be resolved as we look into the future and see how patients do over a significant period of time. And of course, that's what we're all hoping for and we're all studying now in various uh, forums across the country. Obviously, if we have things that we can use that will change the course of their disease and perhaps even heal them, it's good to get this into the mainstream as quickly as possible. I often think about if we are able with regenerative medicine to cure Parkinson's and uh, stop cancer, will everybody live to 120? And so that's my vision for the future. Can, can we cure every ailment that's uh, hurting and killing people? And uh, then what does society do? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> do we have room and resources? <laughs> We're really at the cusp of a, of a brave new world. <laughs> If you think stem cell therapy might be right for you, talk to the physician who's making this presentation available. You might be one of the people joining this brave new world. So as you guys can see, there's some amazing advances in medical technology, right? And we just don't know about them, but they're at our disposal. We need to take advantage of that. So recapping a little bit, our bodies can regenerate, right? Let's use our body's own ability to heal instead of going through surgeries and these other things. You know, every six months, you have a brand new heart. Every three to five days, you have a new stomach lining. That's how off, often your body's healing and regenerating. So kind of, again, recapping, what exactly is a stem cell? It's the primary or basic cell template that can become any other cell in your entire body. That cell can turn into uh, cartilage in your knee, it can help uh, make, an, you know, make more of a disc, um, ligaments, tendons, all those things, even other organs. They're, they're, they're very, very powerful. So, typical treatment cycle. I want you guys to see, 
what is the difference between surgery versus stem cell? What is the, the standard of care look like in America right now? You're gonna start with joint pain. Then what the, what's the very first thing you're gonna do? Take NSAIDs, right? Aspirin, things like that. And again, a lot of people, there's a lot of negatives to taking those drugs because is it regenerating the tissue or is it just covering up the problem? Yeah, it's just covering up the problem and those things lead to you know, stomach issues and ulcers and all kinds of other things. Time's gonna go by and what's gonna happen to the pain? Yeah, it's gonna come back and you're gonna need to take what? More medication, okay? And then after that stops working, then the next standard of care is to take x-rays, okay? When they look at their x-rays, they're gonna see degeneration. Guess what the next thing's gonna be? Cortisone shots. And how many of those can you have? Three. Why do they limit you to three cortisone injections? Does it fix the problem? No, it actually erodes the bone, and that's why you can only do three. Listen guys, we wanna start doing things to regenerate the tissue so this doesn't happen again. We don't want short-term solutions that are gonna cause more issues later on in your life, right? And then another thing is arthroscopy. They can come in there, clean it out, um, and surgery as well. The problem with surgery is it actually builds up scar tissue. And I'm gonna talk a little bit in a second about the importance of that because it's scar tissue in that joint that stops it from moving equally and causes uneven wear and tear. Same thing, the brakes on your car. Say one of them had scar tissue or adhesions in it. The one brake pad's gonna wear out quicker because it wasn't moving back and forth freely. So, so again, there's actually 15,000 uh, 15, deaths a year from NSAIDs. And Tylenol linked to more deaths than any other drug. Right, these things are, these things are dangerous and they're, not and they're not regenerating anything. Again, surgery creates scar tissue. It lasts 10 years and normally, you know, they might say 20, but normally they last about 10 years and you can only have two surgeries in your lifetime. So if you're 40 or 50 years old, you can be done by the, potentially by the time you're 70. So you really wanna to start to look ahead long term. There's also a good chance of infection with those surgeries. Remember I was saying how inefficient the medical system can be? So in one of those, the medical system is actually the third leading, leading cause of death, right behind cancer and heart disease. And that's not from people overdosing on medications, that's from things like infections, taking their medication like they're supposed to. There's risks of infections and things like that from these surgeries, okay? Once you've had that surgery, it's done. You can't ever go back. And the, the rehab is very painful. They normally say six months, six weeks of rehab. Oftentimes they wanna do another six weeks after that. So again, it's not it always as easy as it seems and it can actually cause more issues in the future. Where, where stem cells and these natural injections and natural therapies we have take as little as 15 minutes, no anesthesia, no hospital stays, no antibiotics, zero recovery time, you, you, know, you can expect significant regeneration within 28 days. And there's actually a 97% success rate. So really, really um, good success rates and there's no adverse reactions. So what are patients saying about it? Um, normally one week later, mild inflammation in the joint, in the, in the knee. Four weeks later, um, people are wearing the heels again, going up and down in stairs without pain, bending down, et cetera. Six weeks later, most of our patients are saying they're 90% better able to run and do the things that they love, really what they, they love to do. That's what it's about, not just your knee pain. You know, we want you guys to be able to golf again. We want you to run, be there for your grandchildren. That's what it's about, guys, not knee pain. So, um, so again, there's a, there, there's a huge difference. So, so how do we not only gain proper function in the knee, but keep this from happening again? That's important, right? So it's the same thing as your, the alignment in your car. If the alignment's off, you're gonna wear out your tires. Okay, we can put new tires on your car, but if we don't uh, fix the alignment issue or the issue that caused it, you're gonna wear out your tires, tires again. People ask me, how long will the stem cells last? Well, it depends on the function of your body. If your body's even and functioning normally, 
your spine, your, your spine and joints are supposed to last 120 years. That's why we've, we've put an entire program together to get you so this will so last longer and you'll get better results. So they actually found that a lot of times knee issues, um, up to 30% of the times actually pronation in the foot can cause these issues. And the orthopedic journal found that 30% of the time knee pain is actually from impingement of nerves in the low back. Okay, this is important guys. You cannot physically even feel your knee without the information from your brain going down through your neck, down your back, and then out your sciatic nerve to your knee. Right? That's why this is important because it's 30% of the time and that's why we take x-rays to see if there's any other complications going on. So if we impinge the nerves in your low back that go into the knee, what else could that be affecting? Will the nerves in your low back go to your digestive system, female, male hormones? The nerves in your mid back go to your heart and your lungs. Um, the nerves in the neck go to the thyroid. So these nerve impingements are not just causing weird sensations and pain in joints, they're actually causing other health problems. So that's why we try to correlate this, because if I can help you with your knee pain, I might be able to help you with a wide variety of other health problems. And that's the importance of the entire spine in the kinetic chain. We cannot just look at the knee, we need to look at the hip, the back, the neck, it's a, the foot, it's a kinetic chain, guys. We don't want to miss anything, and that's why we do a comprehensive exam before we ever agree to treat anyone. We need to figure out if we can help you or not first. Okay, so kind of recapping. You can have misalignments that can cause these issues, and that takes about 10 years to show up. You can have lack of motion in the joint. That's from scar tissue, from old injuries, tears, things like that. Um, surgeries can cause lack of motion, scar tissue. We need to address those is issues. And lastly, impingement of nerves that are going to the joint, and that will happen immediately. So during our functional exam, we, we look for misalignments, look for scar tissue, and we also look for, for nerve impingement. So I wanna go over some of the costs that we're spending on knee pain, joint pain. So the natural, national average for knee replacement is 46,000 to 76,000. That's with the surgery, with rehab, everything. Out of pocket with your deductible coinsurance with the surgery and rehab, you're gonna spend about 4,000 to 12,000. A lot of people say, oh, my insurance pays for it. Yes, but you still have your deductible, you still have your copay, and you still have to pay for rehab, the medications, and everything that follows, right? Four to 12,000 you're gonna spend on that surgery. The average cost of amniotic stem cells in our area right now is 4,000 to $7,500. That is the going rate. Why am I showing this to you guys? So you can make an educated decision on what is your best route. It's not to push you in one direction or the other. You have to know the stats. You have to know your budget and what you're working with before you guys ever make a decision. So please, look at your facts and make a reasonable decision. So in our comprehensive approach, we're gonna look at, we looked at posture assessment, range of motion study, core strengthening exercises, trigger point therapies, chiropractic, again, rehab, we have the, the Beamer technology to increase circulation, you know, strengthening weak muscles, stretching, uh, things that are tight. You know, it's putting all this together that's getting us amazing results here in this clinic. I hope that answers all your guys' questions. I look forward to treating each and every, each and every one of you guys. Thanks.